Hello, hello, hello. Am I live? I don't know if I'm actually live. I hope I'm live. I don't think I'm live. Hello, hello, hello. Oh, I guess I'm live now. Sweet. I'm going to wait to see if I can at least get one person before even starting anything. Or maybe I should just start before actually getting people here. Watchers, one. No watchers. Let's, um, let's try something here. Let's say like going to start from the first question first question and going all the way down I'm going to start from the first question and going all the way down nice let's see if we can get anyone that'd be kind of neat I'll do this for like half an hour maybe if no one joins and if people join we can keep going and if not oh I think we have someone if anyone joins the stream, just like drop something on the chat so I can just at least I know that someone's there. I haven't done this in a long time, so I'm trying to reacquaint myself, if you will. All right, so what is the intent of this stream? So if you're in tech, if you're in software, there's a platform called Lead Code that's essentially for problem solving. It's a pretty good platform. I, I almost end up I end up almost always coming back to this one. I like it the most. I've tried several other platforms like Algo Expert, Systems Expert, Front Expert, Hacker Rank. You name it, I've probably done it. And anyway, I want to hold myself accountable, more accountable than I've been doing already. So I, I started a new session here, zero questions done on all categories. And my goal is to go through every single one of the questions, literally one after the other, and see how far we can get. Hopefully this will keep me accountable. And I know some of these questions are not rated well, but I mean, there's gonna there's, there's gotta be some value in doing all of them. And I'm not really in a rush to like jump ship to another company. I'm currently working as a software engineer. I have been for the last five years. So I'm mostly just doing this for fun. And we'll see where it goes. So, I'm literally going to start by setting the difficulty to easy. I'm going to do all the easies, then we'll do all the mediums, and then we'll do all the hards. And hopefully we'll get some some sort of communication, some sort of chat going. And we can just talk about different things you all want to chat about. But we're just going to start from the first one and go all the way down. So let me actually go to algorithms. I don't care about SQL or anything. And I have to keep select the difficulty so we have algorithms on easy sorted by acceptance easiest all the way down to the harder easy questions so if you're also looking to hold yourself accountable you want to start a lead code journey i hope i can be the thing that gets you there or at least some accountability and hey who knows if, if i can make this like I don't want to say I'm going to make this a daily thing because I don't want to you know, shoot too high. I'll just say, like, I'll do this when I feel like doing it. And if people join, if more people join, maybe I'll do it more often. But this is really just like proof of concept. Let's see how far we can get and we'll go from there. So let me just write something in the chat. Thank you to everyone that is watching. That's awesome. That's awesome. So add two integers. Let's just really like, let's just go from here, right? So my language of choice is JavaScript. I'm gonna do all my questions in JavaScript. The intent of this stream is to see me mess up and fail if things go completely wrong. I might not even solve a question, but I really wanna stick with something before going through all the way, right? Like I'm gonna, I'm not gonna ever skip a question unless it's like horrendous. 
And in the meantime, I'll just like I'll just keep this and keep going. Okay, so let us see what we got here. So this is the first question is called add two integers. So we're given two integers, num one and num two. We want to return the sum of the two integers. So we're literally just doing a addition. We have negative 10 plus 4, that's negative 6. We have 12 and 5, that's 17. I don't think there's anything crazy about this question. I really, I really do think it's literally just adding two numbers and returning that. So let's go ahead and do that. Like if we just do return num1 plus num2, it's from the code. So we get, get 17 and 17. 17 and negative 6. You might see I still have the debugger here. I did have like a premium account as of a couple days ago. I stopped for now because there's still a lot of value in just doing the free question. So I didn't really want to pay for it anymore for a little bit. I might get it later. Again, if more people start watching it and they want premium questions, we can surely do that. So let's submit this and see what we got. I'm pretty happy with that. I don't think there's really any other trick to this besides just adding the two numbers. There, there's no need to do any other complex logic here. This is about the easiest question you will ever be presented with on Leak Code. And, you know, after this, it just goes downhill. <laughs> so, yeah, this is, I'm, I'm happy with this. Let us keep going. Now, okay, you know what? Let's think about one thing that I should do, and for my own good, talk about time and space complexity, right? That's a very important thing in these interviews. So I encourage everyone to maybe, if they want to drop comments or, and I see, I see I do have two watchers. So if you guys want to collaborate, talk about some things, that's cool in the chat. Time complexity and space complexity, we're not creating any new variables. We don't have any other space that we're creating for this algorithm. We just take in the two input arguments and add them and then return that. So the space complexity is constant and the time complexity is constant. So that's pretty good. O of one for each one of those. Nice. So let's move on to the next one. I think what I'll do is I'll open these in a new tab. Else, I think, yeah, it's going to make me reorder these every single time. So easy. Again, sort by acceptance. All right. Build array from permutation. So it's uphill after this one. Yeah. No, you're you, honestly that I, I I should use it. I should think about it that way. I guess it goes uphill because the more questions you solve, the better you're getting. So truthfully, you are getting better at it. So yeah, that that's actually a great way of looking at it. That was equivalent dealer twenty. I do appreciate the comment. I think that's awesome. Would love to hear more of your comments and thoughts. If you want me to like try a specific question, we can also do that. We don't necessarily have to like go, you know, one after the other. So. Let's see this one. This is this is a, always like a fun question. It's a weird one, and I do want to really try and figure out this like follow up because I don't think I ever have. But let's try and figure it out both ways. Let's see how we can do this one. So this one says, given a zero based permutation, nums zero indexed, build an array answer of the same length. The answer i equals nums at nums i for each zero less than or equal to i less than nums length and return it. Zero based permutation nums is an array of distinct integers from zero to nums dot length minus one inclusive. Okay, so looks like what they're doing, this one's kind of like weird to see, but I think what they do is they take like for the first i, nums at i, nums at zero is zero, so then your nums at zero will be zero. Nums at one is two, so then the nums at two will be what eventually gets put in one. So there's, there's like an easier way of doing this, or there's an easy way to do it. And the, the hint that I, like, the way that I know that it's probably not the way I'm going to present it now is because this like to dislike ratio. In my experience, if you see an easy question that has something nice like this, the answer is almost never like the first thing you think of, unless you already have a lot of prior experience and you can optimize it from the get-go. And also this follow-up right here sort of hints at there's a better way of doing it. And it looks like there might be with O1 memory. But anyways, let's try to build it up with this first way, and then we'll go from there. So I'll create a new thing, a new array, a new variable here. I'll say const built array. We're definitely going to want to iterate through everything inside of nums, and then based on that, we'll build this array. 
So we can pretty much use just the formula they have in here. So let's see what we can do. So let's loop through everything in our array. So we want i less than nums.length, i plus plus. We're going to say built array dot push. Again, we can really, I believe we can just use this formula here. So if I do nums at nums i, what will this do if we just return built array from here? Let's see, let's see what this gives us. 0, 1, 2, 4, 5, 3. Let's do both of these test cases. 4, 5, 0, 1, 2, 3. We pass both test cases. Let's submit. OK, so this one works. However, so let's think about time and space complexity, right? Time complexity, we have this input nums, and we are traversing. We're, we're, we're iterating through the whole the whole thing, right? So we know at least the time complexity will be linear. And the space complexity, we're building a new array that's of equal length of nums. So right now, time and space complexity are both linear. O of n for each one of those. By the way, I'm complete, like I'm very open to feedback. And I'm, th this, this stream is not so much like me. Like I'm just making my thoughts public, I guess, but I'm very open to like criticism and please correct me if I'm wrong. And I love to be challenged because that's truly the only way that we'll all grow. So I really want to take it from the standpoint of like, I'm trying to hopefully motivate people to be more accountable with their lead code journey and also for me to learn for everyone to learn. So let's just keep it going from here. All right. So let's think about now how we can, what are they? What are they saying that we can do? Can we solve it without using extra space? So there's a way that we can do it without solving extra space. And how are we going to do that? So let's like try and think about this. Let's see. Let's think about like this original array that we have here. And we know that every single time we get, I almost feel like for some of these easy questions, there's this sort of a, there's like this sorting algorithm called cyclic sort. It's like this thing where you swap numbers and then you keep swapping them as long as like the number you're on is not equal to the index, some weird thing like that. But let's sort, let's like experiment with that and see what happens. So I, I want to write, I want to write the formula out here a little bit for myself because it could be a little bit tricky here. So let's say we have for indexes 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So they want us to do nums, nums at nums. Let's just say nums at i. Or better yet, instead of doing this, let's do nums at 0. And then here I'll just do uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Four, three, three. One, zero, one, two, zero, one, two, three, four, five. So nums at zero. So nums. I'm also going to write this. And we have nums at zero. Nums at zero. We look at nums at zero is zero. And then nums at zero, this is zero. And like when we're at i zero, we're currently at the zeroth position. So Based on that thing I was talking about earlier, maybe this is okay. Now let's think about like the next case. So nums, nums at one gives us two, and then nums at two gives us one. So let's see. When i is equal to one, we come here. Nums at one is one. But uh, nums at one is two, and nums at two is one. So should we swap, should we, yeah, because we have uh, nums at one is two. What happens if we like swap these two locations? The one that's at one and the one that's at two. So we do like one, two here. We're currently at the place that we want to be, right? Like i is equal to one, so maybe that's okay. But let me, let me like keep kind of going in this way and see what we can get to. Uh, nums at nums, nums at nums, 
2. What, what's nums at nums 2? So 0, 1, 2 is 2. And then uh, 2, so these are both the same. So maybe that maybe that's okay. Again, these are both the same. And so far, we're okay on the first three, but now, now here like really comes the test. Nums at nums 3. So 0, 1, 2, 3 is 5. And then we have uh, the fourth one, which is 4. So we want to swap these. This will be 5. This will be 4. But this is not, this is like still, this is not equal to the current i. So what happens if I do like a similar thing again? Can I do like nums? Uh, what's nums at four? Oh, wait a second. This is not. This is just gonna make it so now. Zero, one, two. Hmm. Like if I continue from here, actually, zero, one, two, three. But we already have the four there. That's four. Not four. It's three. So how do we ever get to the five? Right, because then nums at five is five, and nums at five is five. That doesn't actually get us to this spot here. Let's see if there's another way of doing it. There's got to be some like way to follow this all the way through. I almost wonder if this is like a maybe instead of this like sort. Maybe that's that's probably where I messed up, right? Like the cyclic sort. I feel like this is not really so much sorting as it is like maybe following some pointer all the way through. So what if we did something like maybe like a fast and slow pointer? Almost like when we're trying to find can that be like a cycle sort of deal? What if this was like what if this was instead I'm really just like riffing here trying to, to figure this out. So what if this was 0, 1, 2, 0, 2, 1, 5, 3, 4. What if this was a linked list? This is just like nums at, nums at 0, 0, nums at 1. And then what if we transform this to, so now we look at 0, which is 0 look at the one that's one or we look at the one that's no we look at the two that's one we look at the one and that's two we look at the five that's four we look at the three that's five we look at the four that's three so how did we get there what can we try to figure out as we're moving along here like what if we zero to zero to that goes to one one points to five and we go to four if I want the thing that's here to be the thing that's in four zero one two four I want the thing that's here to be the one at zero. I want the thing here to be the one that's at two. Okay. Let me try it a little bit again. I want the thing at zero to be zero. I want the next one to be the thing at two, which is one. Like if I if I swap those immediately, I'm gonna sort of like lose the context. Is there a way for me to like store that variable? If I stored that variable, would it help? If I stored the value that was there previously, would that help? Zero, one, let me like zoom in on this a little. I don't know if you guys, hopefully you guys can see well, but I should probably also like, well, I, I suspect some of you might be watching this on, on mobile, but I just, I left the link. I dropped a link to the question if you guys also wanna like try it out. Okay, so zero, two, one, so the thing at zero is zero. The thing here at two is one. So it's not the same. 
So if I like held two, and did the swap, and then the thing at two, Not the thing at two, that's already that one. I come here, say I want the thing that's at five. You can't just do a blatant switch. I want the thing at three. The thing at three was the thing at five, though. Hmm. What if we think of this like? I'm just curious because sometimes thinking about things backwards also sort of helps. So let's see if we can think of it backwards because that's just like a direction I haven't gone in. I don't know if that's going to help at all, but it's definitely worth a shot. So let's let's start our thing over again here. Let's just get this. I want the thing at four to be here. So three, four. Oh, wait. Oh, interesting. doesn't actually want that. Oh, no, yeah. I want the thing at 4 to be here. I don't want to swap that with the 4. Unless, what if we just keep, what if we just keep swapping? What if we, like, remember the value that it's on? Like, I want, okay, I want the thing at four to be here, so that's three. And then here I want the thing at three to be here, five. I want the thing at five to be here, which was the four, but I've lost the four. What leak code number is this? Oh, 1920. Yeah, I'll, I'm also gonna drop it in the chat, 1920. I think that's what you're asking, right? 1920. Yeah, so we're trying to figure out how to do this with O1 memory. All the elements here are distinct. Definitely. For me, it's more of an issue of like remembering a previous number. And I guess really we could use an extra variable. That's, that's like what I'm thinking. Let me just copy this again. The issue is with overwriting a previous value. How about, it? well, maybe I should think about when do I overwrite versus not. Like when do I lose, I don't want the thing at three to be here. So if I put this, I want the thing at four to be here. Okay. Now I've completely lost the four. I want the thing at five to be in the front. Okay, so put it in the front. And now where does the five go? Why would the five go in one? All right, so like if I move the four to the The one I just took out in zero. Hmm. Two, one, two, three. These were also all indices. These were all indices, right? I'm gonna use my whiteboard to draw things out like by hand, but I'm gonna continue talking about it because I think that'll also help me out. So these are indices that we're given. Yeah, these are in different indices. So five, zero, one, two, three, four. This is exactly the type of thing I wanted to do, like really struggle with this. The follow-ups are really where you learn the most. So I'm pretty excited about this. Five, zero, one, two, three, four. We're given the indice where it belongs. Like this thing belongs in, oh, but then that's just gonna, no, 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 we're not given the indice of where it belongs. We're given 
we're given the indice of where to look. Nums at five. Nums at zero equals five. So then nums at five. We just do that swap. We have four, zero, one, two, three, five, and two, zero. Numbers at zero, zero. And now we want to look at nums at zero, at four. I want the thing at zero to be there. But we lost it. Interesting. Somehow have to remember that value. Like why would it why would it necessarily be let's see, actually you know what? Let's see the upper bound. Well no, because even if I had the thousand things I mean I guess constant constant memory could still be you can still be bounded but it's weird to have like something the size of that nums that length the elements and nums are distinct hmm that's weird without using an extra space yeah This one's tricky. Should we look at hints? It's been it's been like probably 15 minutes that I've been on this follow-up, but I wonder if these hints are even for the follow-up. I really don't want to look at hints. Hints or no hints? Apparently there's five people watching, so do people think I should look at hints? I'm gonna lean towards no. I really don't want to. <laughs> because there's going to be a very good learning opportunity for me here. It's very, like, this means, this is absolutely a hint, right? That all this is distinct, distinct numbers. There's never going to be duplicates. Build an array from the permutation without using any extra space. Four five zero one two three. I swap things we don't. Hmm. Wait a second. Zero index for enter I. to length minus one. What if we use, what if we use like a, a loop to go through each number? Zero, one, two, three, four, five. We have all the numbers represented and they're all distinct. So if we go to each one, if we go to each one, zero, one, two, three, four, five. Like what happens if I look at zero first? Okay, the zero is zero is five. So get the thing from five and swap it. Okay, so we have four, five, then we go to one, zero, go to the thing at zero. Go to the thing that's at zero. It there that's also going to be weird that's also a four go to two that's also a four go to three no. i almost i almost think that's like perhaps something that we can do like we can let the counter we can let the, the index we're currently on like if we iterate through every item in the array like zero through length minus one let's say we're like at one or two, three, four, you know, whatever. We, we can use that to like find the index of where it should eventually belong. Did that help me? Four, five, let me just look at the, let me put it in here. Four, five, five, zero, one, five, 
five zero one two three four. Zero one two three four five. And we'll go to zero. Oh, but then that's also using zero and from five one. The thing from zero, which is five two. The thing from one, which is zero three. The thing from two, which is one four. The thing from three, which is two five. The thing from four. Just three, four, five, zero, one, two, three. Should I overwrite anything? Without using any extra space is like, oh, I think you're overthinking it. I don't think the description intends to do this in place. Just use a for loop and add that to built array. So I, by the way, I really appreciate the the comment. So you're you're saying that you think I'm overthinking it for like even the follow up, or yeah, I was just trying to like here. I guess this one, like I came up with the I guess brute force solution maybe, like the one that's linear for both time and space. And I was trying to think of the follow-up without using any extra space. Unless that's, unless they don't consider this like any extra space, but I feel like the fact that there's like, I, I feel like it's a very specific ask. So I'm curious, like, yeah, I, I don't know if you were referring to like the original question or just like the follow-up, but thank you. Thank you for the comment though. It's awesome. So what like if I already built that how would we know yeah because constant uh, it's gonna change the array it might almost even be able to do like hmm. Yeah, when they say when they say any extra space, because here I'm literally building a new array that's exactly the same size as the input. Zero, one, two, three, four, five. Zero, the thing from five, four. What happens if we do like two? What happens if we do two passes here? Is that going to help at all? If we go five, four, three, two, one. Five becomes three. Four becomes two, three becomes one, becomes zero, one becomes zero, and zero becomes four. So now, if we have something that looks like that, I'll write two, becomes a minus one, which is zero, one becomes a minus one, zero, which is five, zero, one, two, three, four, five. So if we have four, five, zero, one, two, three, now we say the thing at four, yeah, that becomes a two and that just messes everything up. Yeah, this is, I really wonder if this is meaning feet in place. Let's do this for the sake of the stream. So, I think one of my initial rules was that I was not going to, I wasn't going to skip any question and technically we didn't skip this question. We did solve it, but we should definitely come back to it because I, I need to like think about it for a little more. So I'm going to open up a notepad here, I'm gonna copy this. 
I wonder if you guys, no, you guys can't see my notepad. I put this as a question to come back to because I think it could be, oh, actually look at this. Create a new list, Reddit stream revisit. Uh, I'll make this public, why not? So, oh, okay, cool. Reddit stream visit, nice. So we'll come back to that one. In your for loop is good. All right, let's get to this next one here. Concatenation, concatenation of an array. All right, so <clears throat> let's check this one out. So given an integer array nums of length n, you want to create an array answer of length 2n for answer i. So index specifically answer is a concatenation of two nums arrays. Return the array answer. OK, cool. So I think we just need to take this array and then append it to the end. Yeah, just concatenate them. So 1, 3, 2, 1, and then again 1, 3, 2, 1. OK, so we just want to like concatenate something. I feel like there's like definitely like a couple different ways you can do this that we know the follow up. Okay then. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. No, I I do I really do appreciate your comment and I think yeah glad glad to know that like I I got the at, at least the initial question right. Like I said, I added it to my list so that way we can revisit it because I think it is worth it to revisit it. It's probably like I don't know if, how clever the solution is, but it's something I should mull over for a little bit. I think that'll be really fun. But yeah, I, I do appreciate it. For the people that are watching, I would love if like if you just drop like a thumbs up or something, let me know. Is this something that you enjoy watching? Do you feel like having a stream like this that you can watch is something that might actually hold you accountable to some like lead code, you know, habit of getting into it and doing it? Yeah, let me know. That will definitely help me to like keep going if it's a useful thing. All right, so given an integer array, yeah, we already did this. So there's like three, there's at least three different ways I'm going to try this. I wonder, can we just do like return nums dot compact nums? Like what happens if we do this? I think this will work just on its own. Okay, so that one does work. That's cool. Let's see, that's like one way I can do it. This is just using the library. Like the JavaScript array prototype for me to be able to concat something to this initial argument here. So let's see what else we can do. That's one thing. We can also use we can use the spread operator, and we should just be able to do nums. Nums should be able to also do that. Yeah. Okay. That's pretty good. And I think if you Probably what they're looking for, I'm guessing, is a little more, yeah, it's going to be a little more, I guess, I don't know, imperative, like very pres uh, prescriptive solution, if that's even the word. So what we can do, I don't really want to, let's see. Yeah, let's say concat concatenated array equals nums we can say for let i equals zero i less than concatenated array we're gonna need to also get the original length or we can just say i less than nums dot length i plus plus here we can do concatenated array dot push nums at i let's see what this gives us like the same thing. Oh, I had already had both of these. 51.67. All right. Seems like good to me. I think in all these cases, let's see. We're going to have a linear time complexity and also a linear space complexity. However, we're creating. Well, I suppose not actually. Well, I guess the space complexity would be 2n. 
And so we're essentially doubling the size of our input array, but that really just becomes O of n since we just drop the constant. So I'm, I feel comfortable saying it's O of n for time and space. Let's go ahead and look at the discussion. That's one thing that I want to do here too. I think it's important for us to talk about this stuff. Okay, so the, is this the highest voted solution? Most votes. I'm trying to be language agnostic. I don't really care what language it's in. I just want to see like the concept. So yeah, they get the original size. And the reason we get the original size is if you just, if you go, if you have an iterator less than the size of the array, you're always pushing to that array. So it's like you're going to continue, continue going instead of just like stopping at the original n or the original size of the array. So nums that push back, nums that I return nums. Yeah, seems pretty straightforward to me. Pretty happy about that. Let us keep going here. Remove vowels from a string. Given the string s, remove the vowels a, e, i, o, u from it and return the new string. Yeah, anytime I see anything with strings, I think like regex should definitely definitely be one of the things that you think about. Like for example, if I want to remove, can we just do uh, return s dot replace all? What if we start a new like a, e, i, o, u? Let's make it case insensitive and global. Then here we'll replace it with a space. Is that going to work? It's all right. 44.74. Yeah, I mean, that's like one of the, like the first ways I would solve it. Now, replace all. What is the time complexity of replace all? So MDN, or let's do replace all. JavaScript time complexity. I think this is going to use one of those like famous algorithm, like is it Muth Morris Pratt or something? KMP. Yeah, I might maybe I'll wait for this one to load. Ooh, currently offline for maintenance. Well, let's see what discussion says. One line of code. Okay, sweet. So replace all A E I O U. Yeah, it looks like they also did. Well, I guess do we even need it? Okay, yeah, they're they're doing a regex here. I guess I guess in Java this is just automatically take a regex and this is the capture group. Maybe you can just write it like that. Sweet. I guess if you also want to be like I mean I I feel like this is pretty descriptive. Um, if you want to make it more clear, like if you want to have, I guess, like self-documenting code, maybe we can say like vowel regex equals new. I think we can do something like this. Does that work or does it want me to? Oh yeah, I think it does too. Nice. Yeah, one of the reasons I like this is because it, it allows for your code to maybe be a little more readable. Like, let's just say, you know, if you have like a new developer joining the team, maybe they don't really know about regex that much. Like, they, like if, if they've never seen the syntax, they might just say like, wow, this is really confusing. I have no idea what this is. But then doing something like this makes it a little more descriptive where now they know exactly like, hey, this is a, this is a regular expression. I can go and look this up on MDN or something. I can learn more about it, and then they will just go, you know, down their own rabbit hole and learn more about this. So I'm, I'm all for that. I think that's like a pretty good thing. So that's pretty cool. I'm pretty happy with this. Let's continue. We're running some of a 1D array. I'll probably, like, they're giving me almost like an hour. They gave me almost like three hours to do this stream. I probably just like I probably just like stop at the hour so I have 17 minutes left because I want to try and upload some of these to YouTube. Like probably I'll do a stream here and then I'll just upload the stream to YouTube. It'll be good just like for my own like it'll be good for posterity and hopefully some other people like benefit from it. So let's keep going. 
running sum of a 1D array. So given an array nums, we define a running sum of an array as running sum of i equals the sums of nums i all the way to sums 0. Or yeah, sums nums of 0 all the way to nums i. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 3, 6. So you do 1 and then 1 plus 2. So really it's like 2 plus the previous one. 3 plus the previous one, which is now 3. And then 4 plus the previous one. Nice. I, yeah, I think an easy way for us to do this is, I mean, let's just do what it says, right? We know we're never going to have to change. Like the first one will always stay the same. So because of that, we can start at 1. And this is sort of nice because it's going to protect us from the case where we just get, I mean, are they yeah, equal to 1? So if we, if we just have an array of 1, we'll just return that. We won't even like enter this loop here. But really what we can do here is we can say that nums at i equals nums at i plus nums, sorry about that, plus nums at i minus 1. Right? So if we think about this, like i is 1 here, so now we say nums at i, nums at 1 is 2 plus the previous one, so that's 3. Now we set this equal to 3. So then we come here, oh, let me just write this down make it a little easier so remember we don't we don't need to like consider this one right so we just come over here i equals one nums at i equals nums at i plus the previous one so this becomes a three now we increment this this becomes three plus the previous one six increment this four plus the previous one that becomes a ten we're out and we return one three six ten and really we can even condense this and make it nums cluster equals nums i minus 1. And let's return nums here. Cool. Yeah, this is like a nice, this is a good problem to learn about. It's a good technique to learn about. Did this in linear time with constant space. So that's pretty neat. Let's see what the discussion has to say. Python partial sum. Accumulate, perhaps the easiest. That doesn't. This doesn't really teach me anything. JavaScript reduce, I guess. I mean, you definitely can use a reduce. Reduce is reduce is awesome, by the way. If you're not already using reduce today, I highly recommend getting used to using it. I think that while this is a very good solution, I would say that hopefully mine's slightly more readable. I think it's just more it's like easier to understand and it's more like it follows the general algorithm for this sort of thing so i'm, I'm happy with this one i'll continue here so how many questions have we done we've done five questions we got 581 and when i say we're going to do all the easies and all the mediums all the hards i really mean it so if you're watching this you're in it for the long haul and you're in it to learn a lot which i'm really happy about so Let's go to the next one. The root equals the sum of children. All right. You're given you're given the root of a binary tree that consists consists of exactly three nodes: the root, its left child, and its right child. Return true if the value of the root is equal to the sum of the values of its two children, or false otherwise. The tree consists only of root, its left child, and its right. Really? We just have to check that the root is equal to the sum of its children. So what can I just do return root.val is equal to root.left.val plus root.right.val. Really? Okay. That's cool, I guess. That's easy. Yeah, constant. Uh, yeah, constant time, constant space. Nice, simple question. I mean, about the most introductory thing that you can do for a tree, and, and really all you're learning here is, like, not really anything. I mean, you're just using the syntax to be able to get access to the child nodes and then sum their values to compare it to that of the parent node. So I guess that's interesting. That's cool. I'm all for it. 
defanging. What does that word mean? Defanging an IP address? Places are, okay, this looks exactly like the question we did before. So I will prescribe a, it looks like we're just gonna do a simple replace all. So can we do return address dot replace all? with that. So we're going to replace all instances of a period, case insensitive and global with the, parent, not the parentheses, the square brackets. Pretty interesting, replace all with regex. Let's look at our discussion here, regex replace. Yep, same thing. I kind of want to look again to see if we can get that like replace all JavaScript time complexity. Here we go. Replace. Hello, hi. Secondly, searching a substring inside a string can be done in linear time using the Campy algorithm, which is the most efficient. Replacing in the worst case will take linear time as well. So let's say if it uses this algorithm, Campy, which I'm going to assume like, let's say like, the, the the Chrome V8 engine for JavaScript, they probably implemented the KMP algorithm for something like this. So we can assume this will just take O of n time. And now the space complexity, do we need any extra space for KMP? Morris, with Morris Pratt algorithm. Worst case performing. Oh, pre-processing plus matching and space complexity. We have like sample efficiency n plus k. Interesting. What is n plus k though? Well, what is m? I guess m is just. Occurrences of a word within a main text string, S, a word within a string, W plus S. So in this case, W, and then W, and then S is what? Within a main text string? So yeah, this would be O, let's say O of, you know, W plus S, where W is this regex that we're looking for here, or, or this pattern, like W equals however many instances of this, and S, I, I suppose, is just the length of address. That's kind of neat. O, W plus S, and I guess the space is just N. Starting a string matching algorithm wants to find the starting index N in string, oh, string matching. So the space complexity be linear. It's going to be something that's not constant, so it might just be the size of the input string. Sounds about sounds about right to me, but I'm open to a discussion if anyone else has some some further thoughts. All right. Find the value of a variable after performing operations. So there's a programming language with only four operations and one variable x plus plus x and x plus plus. Okay, given an array of strings. So we have two cases. We have like four different cases, but really if it's if it's not a plus, we know for sure it's gonna be a minus. So if I had final value at zero, we can do four const operation of operations. Or actually, I wonder if like, well, well, we'll transform to reduce after this, but a reduce could be nice here. But so if operation at zero is equal to a plus or operation at operation dot length minus one is equal to a plus, then we'll do final value plus plus, else final value minus minus, can we return final value? See what this gives us. 
one, one three zero, one three zero. Okay, so that works. Let's see if we can maybe do something a little better here. I think like using reduce, we can do something nice here. So we can say return operations dot reduce. We have our accumulator and the current value. And then in here, so we can say, yeah, we can still say that if, let's just take this. Well, let's say if operation, put in here, I'm going to remove all this just to give myself some space. Let's do our value, our value zero, our value, our value dot length equals plus plus, we can return accumulator plus one, minus return minus one. Does that work? One, three, zero. Ooh, it works, yes, nice. So what do we do here, right? Like, and you know what? Honestly, like we should try to be a little more, I can be a little more descriptive here, although, like maybe this can be the value and this can be my operation. So previously where I had value, we can still leave this like this, right? Cause now it's a little bit easier to read. It should give us back the same thing. Now, if I really, if I really want to be even more, more condensed, that's like the furthest, the most that we can do this. I can even say, We do this, say return operation, and I, I'm going to split this up a little bit into some lines, but this might look kind of gross. So maybe maybe we'll keep it here. Maybe we can say value plus one, maybe minus one, remove all this. So that's still happy. We can even remove this take advantage of like the single the implicit return that we get with arrow functions wow five percent got even worse something like this 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 will be good so we go through each operation right we only have to worry about the ones that are plus or you can also do the same for the minuses because if you know it doesn't satisfy any of the conditions for a minus then you know it must be a plus that's also assuming that each one of these are valid operations. Like maybe they can, you know, throw you a wrench and say, hey, like this might be something else that's not valid and doesn't follow this format. It might be something good to reach out to like your, your interviewer about. That's pretty cool. So yeah, let's keep going. This might be my last one here. I'm coming up to an hour. But I've had a lot of fun hoping to do this again soon. So let me see, you're given M by N integer accounts where accounts IJ is the amount of money which in the wealth that the richest customer has. Okay, so we'll have, <clears throat> let's say richest is zero. And we can say for accounts of accounts, Really here, we can say uh, richest equals, oh, but we don't want to take the max. We want to take the addition of each one. We can also reduce here. Right? We can get, we can do something like const wealth equals account dot reduce. Well, this is just like your classic addition here. Uh, plus val with zero, and then we can say that the richest equals math.max of the richest or this current wealth, and we can return the richest here. Is that 6 and 6? 6, 6, 10, 17. Cool, so yeah, this is cool because it uses, uses the reduce again, right? So what I'm doing is I'm going through each account. I have this initial variable richest. 
And the first thing we do is we get the wealth of the current account by using a reduce because we essentially want to add up all these intermediary numbers here. And then we compare it with the current richest. We say, what's greater, the wealth or the richest? And we keep doing that all the way until we return the richest at the end. So this one, yeah, this is going to be, let's see, accounts length. And yeah, this is going to be O of M times N, right? Where M is the amount of accounts and N is the amount of individual, I guess, like monies. Like the amount of money, yeah, the individual money, so O of M times N. And the space is constant. We're not creating any extra space with the solution. So O of M, N time, and constant space. Let's see what this has to say. Row sum maximum. The wealth of a customer is the sum of all the money. Total money, single step solution, okay. O of M times N. Yeah, n banks. Well, I guess that's the banks, not mo well, monies or banks. O of n times one. Open the solution tab, thinking there might be some optimized solution. Cool. Well, I think this is going to wrap it up for me. A quick summary of what we did today. We solved nine questions, so pretty happy about that. So far, we have a nice 100% acceptance. And there's one question that we are going to follow up on, which is the build array from permutation. How can I actually? How can I actually look at that list? I'm planning, like, just like complete. I mean, on, I'm just gonna be honest, like, shameless plug. I thought about this before, but I what I really want to do is I want to upload this to YouTube. 